This is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com. Today I want to talk to you about purchasing your first astrophotography telescope. When looking for your first telescope for astrophotography, most places will tell you that aperture is the main thing and the most important thing you should be looking for. Now I don't disagree with aperture being one of the most important stats on a telescope, but I think that it's more important first that you find the focal length that you're looking for. First thing I want to do is take you to telescopius.com. In here, you'll be able to see what the field of view is going to look like with the desired focal length that you choose. The first thing you want to do is go into targets and choose deep sky. On the right, you'll see a number of different targets based on the criteria and search parameters on the left. I have mine set to 20 degrees over the horizon because that's where I start to take images and at least 30 degrees away from the moon unless it's a full moon and I'm doing uh, narrow band imaging on that night then I'll put 60 or 90 degrees away from the moon so let's choose some images and then look at the focal length and what they'll look like in the field of view we can start with the Orion Nebula you'll see that the telescope simulator is showing you um, the field of view based upon the value that you put in the focal length. Now my current telescope is not 2032. That's the future telescope that I'm looking to get. So my current telescope is at 559 and it's got a flattener reducer of 0.8. And when we come in here we'll see that with the camera settings for my camera, uh, the sensor size, this is what it'll look like. And I could get the Running Man and the Orion Nebula in the same shot if I desired. This is, to me is how you would decide what kind of telescope you want, or at least the beginning of what type of focal length that you're looking for. If you're looking to fill the frame with huge nebulae, then you're going to need a telescope with a smaller focal length. However, if you're looking to image some galaxies or star clusters, let's take a look. Let's remove the nebula and look at just star clusters. So in this case, let's pick Hercules. M13. With my current telescope and camera, this is what Hercules would look like. It's maybe one quarter or less of the frame. With the telescope that I'm thinking of getting in the future, it's got a focal length of 2032 without the reducer. And now this is what it would look like with my current camera but with the new telescope. So use this tool to decide what targets you're going to image and what that field of view you want for those targets to be. The next tool I want to show you is the CCD suitability calculator. Basically all it does is tells you if the focal length is going to match up with the pixel size from your camera. So you'll want to go to Google and you'll want to Google the pixel size of the camera that you're planning on using with your new telescope. In this particular case, mine is 3.8 microns. The focal length that I have chosen for my telescope is 447 which gives me, in OK scene, um, a, an ideal pixel size. However, 
As I move up to good scene and to exceptional scene, you'll notice that my camera and the telescope that I chose starts to produce softer and softer images based on how well the scene is. So it's somewhat difficult and you're limited based on the camera that you have or the, the focal length that you want and what camera you're thinking of. The future telescope that I'm looking to get um, has a focal length of 200 uh, 2032 millimeters and then in using the same camera all of a sudden now I'm oversampling I've gone from undersampling to oversampling by changing the telescope out but yet using the same camera however when the scene's good which it mostly is around here and occasionally exceptional now I'm in the green and that is the ideal pixel size so this is another tool to keep in mind. Uh, it, it's not absolutely necessary, but I would also consider this while weighing what kind of telescope that you're going to get. Finally, I want to go over the spreadsheet in the Astrophotography Beginners Forum under Reddit. Um, they've made a very nice Google Docs spreadsheet on the available astrophotography refractors. The first group are the ED doublet refractors. Now, in my opinion, as long as the doublet refractors have FPL 53 glass, then you're going to get a pretty decent image. You'll see the focal lengths in this column here. And just remember that when you're looking at the focal lengths in this column, these are the native focal lengths before you put a flattener slash reducer on your telescope. And you'll need a flattener to keep the stars round all the way to the edges. So keep that in mind. Most of them are 0.7 or 0.8 reduction. So do that calculation um, based on what you see here. Here's, uh, for instance, my telescope, and it's got a 559. But really, after I put the flattener on before the camera, I've got 447. So if you're looking for something in the 432 range, you don't want to actually get a 432 millimeter refractor if you put the reducer on and it drops it down to around 360. As you scroll down, you could see the triplet refractors as well. It's a pretty good tool to use when trying to do research on which telescope you're going to buy first. The list even has quadruplets in here, which is um, telescopes that have the field flatteners built into them. And you're going to pay a little bit more for these, but not a whole lot more. And sometimes it makes more sense to get these like in the uh, William Optics Red Cat Space Cat. Uh, this is a fantastic telescope. There's been numerous reviews. Um, it's just amazing. And it's not too badly priced in the U.S. 748. The problem is, is that for me anyway, 250 millimeters is extremely wide field and I prefer more in the 400 to 500 range or even all, all the way up to 700 uh, for a lot of the nebula. For galaxies I'm looking at between 1500 and 2000 millimeters. Well I hope this video helped a little bit. With the holidays coming up I know that most likely many of you are going to be buying your first astrophotography telescope and this will just give you a little bit of insight into searching for that perfect scope for you. If it did help, please drop me a like and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.